Everyone, I'm Captain Logan. I'm Eric. And it's time once again to recommend things. Congratulations, Eric. This is your first recommend, and you did the opening correctly. Today, we're going to recommend I'm some Mark. things. I'm very excited to have Eric on the show, finally recommending a thing. We're going to uh, keep rotating the crew and have different co-hosts on the show and on Geeks Not Nerds. Uh, I think this is going to be really, really neat, and we get to find out right now what Eric has chosen to recommend today. I'm going to recommend a TV show. Ooh. It's called How? Um, the, I, I actually bought both the Blu-rays. This is season two. Um, I'm actually going to... If you don't want to spend money, it's on Hulu. That's how I found it. And I just happened to go buy the DVDs because they're $8.99. Um, it's a show about two struggling filmmakers who want to make horror movies. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a sitcom. And uh, I mean, I think I, I, is it on this DVD? It might be on the first one. The logline that I saw everywhere when I first discovered this is, it's like the Big Bang Theory, but funny. Um, it, would you describe it that way? It's more movie geekery focused. Like, there's certainly a little bit of comic book stuff, but it's far more, like, movie focused than it is, like, comics. Um, it's it's an interesting show. I really like it. Um, and I... I know you and I have never agreed on this, but it's really hard to review comedy. So when you were like, oh, do you have something to recommend? I'm like, yes, I do. <laughs> um, so I'm not going to make a video and be critical about this because they're jokes and I think they're funny. The end. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's a really weird show uh, that has... And season two is wackier than season one. I think that's a lot a budgetary thing. Season one is six episodes. Season two is ten. I'm pretty sure that's a... That's a budgetary thing. <laughs> they probably would have been wackier early on if they could have afforded it. Uh, but it's just this really fun show. Uh, I actually do not recommend it for you. Um, oh, oh, I should I don't not think watch it has your comic sensibilities. Okay, all right. Uh, it's 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 a it's a darker humor, um, or it can be. It's very strange. It's kind of somewhere between Community and uh, uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen Always Side Philadelphia, no, but those are really dark. Those are humor. both shows that people have kind of told me I probably wouldn't like that much, so I've never watched either of them. Oh, I think you would like Community. Oh, really? Okay. I, I will maybe okay. finally try I, that. But, but yeah, yeah. I, like, tonally, tonally, I would say it's somewhere... I'm so picky about comedy that I between. tend to not try stuff until... It's a Community and... Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and Always Sunny, because there's really funny, really geeky references... And then there will be season two has the darkest joke I've ever seen about suicide, and I thought it was really funny. But that's not a joke for everybody. Yeah. So I'm I'm recommending this with a caveat of it's it it dabbles in really black humor. Um, it's not always that, but like it has those elements. Um, and a lot of that really is the fact that it's made the, the main characters want to make horror films, so a lot of the humor is very horror filmy. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and the main reason that I'm going to recommend it is that the show tricked me because I was watching it. And I'm like, oh, I enjoy this show. But this isn't one of those sitcoms where, like, I care about the characters. And then I got to the end of season two and sad things started happening. And and I, I Sam Raimi, Peter Parker cried with just a tear down each, wow. each cheek. I was like, cool. oh, I'm sad that sad things are happening. Um, so, yeah, it's not a, it's certainly not a show that I think everyone would like. But... Uh, it's on Hulu. You can try it for free. They have the first six episodes and the Christmas special. Uh, so I would recommend at least trying it because I think it's I think it's really good and no one seems to be aware it, it exists because it airs on FearNet. Yeah, I I only recently even heard of that. Like I didn't know it existed. Yeah, I I didn't know I thought, what I it was. It was a movie, but that's Fear.com. Oh yeah, that's a different thing. Um, it sounds to me like, like, uh, people who subscribed to you before they found Geek Geekvolution and stayed subscribed to you, those are the people that would like that show. Yeah. 
would you say that uh, the references and things feel more like accurate and genuine than they do on Big Bang? Because that's one of the things with, with me with that show is just sometimes the humor is kind of generic and it, it, it like like sometimes yeah. it feels like we're talking about comic stuff but we don't really know what we're talking about. Like sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. Well, what I really like is uh, because again it's more movie focused and so sometimes they'll they will make jokes that I will not get um, because. I'm not a horror movie guy. Like, they have Danielle Harris on, and I don't really know who that is. And they're like, oh, she's from the Halloween movies. And I'm like, I vaguely remember there being a little girl in Halloween movies. And then they're like, oh, she's in Last Action or uh, Last Boy Scout. And I'm like, I know Last Boy Scout. I know exactly who this person is. Um, so, yeah, and they – some of the references are, like, really deep pulls. Like, there's a there's an episode where they're, they have, like, a conversation, like, all right, favorite John Carpenter movies, go. And he's like, uh, Prince of Darkness. And I was like, that's a deep pull. Like, yeah. that's not like a mainstream, like, The Thing or even, like, They Live. That's like a forgotten movie. Like, not only do you have to um, really so, know your stuff to get it, but those kinds of things can be risky even for the target audience. Like, yeah, I, exactly. I, and that's, I question and I really appreciate that. I question that sometimes. You know, this is neither here nor there, but some, something I think about sometimes is back when I was in college, uh, if somebody would put in a cultural reference to something in a story when I was in writing school, um, I, I always had professors that would, in one in particular, that would uh, that seemed to think he knew exactly what characters and properties were mainstream enough to go in your story and which ones weren't. And I'd love to see what that guy thinks now in 2016, because this would have been back it, it, like the, it, at the latest 07, 08. I'd love to, th to, to know what he thinks, what he would think now of what superheroes are okay to put in a story and which ones weren't. Because like, like Green Lantern was going too far, but like Superman and Batman were okay. Like now, that guy's gotta be like, Deadpool's all right. Right, but Squirrel Girls may be going... Like, we just live in a totally different world now. And so I think about what dates a thing now and what doesn't, and what is, like, too obscure of a reference and what isn't, and it's getting harder and harder to tell because we're so culturally, like, charged well, I now. Well, what they do really well is they contextualize a joke enough that even if you don't get it, you can kind of get it. Uh, like, the, the season finale of... of Season one, they go to a horror convention. Almost every joke in the episode is probably funnier if you were a person that goes to horror conventions. Mm -hmm. But I can still, from context, get these are things that happen at conventions. These are probably really stereotypical things, and it's still funny. Um, meanwhile, I told, I told a friend of mine who's a total horror movie guy and does go to horror conventions about it, and like there were jokes that like he was pointing out where he's like, that list of people that they just named, those are the nine people that are at every single horror convention ever. That's awesome. That's why that's funny. And I was like, oh, that makes it even funnier. Um, so I think they do pretty well with the balancing act of even if you don't get the reference, you still get the joke. But then there's um, this extra layer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Which is fun because I don't usually watch things where I don't get the jokes. Like... Because I mostly watch, when I watch things that are geeky, it's very comic booky and, like, I get everything. And, so watching yeah. something that's more film and specifically horror film focused is kind of fun because I know that there's all these cool references going on and I'm only getting, you know, 60% of them. But that means that it must go pretty deep as far as references go for you to only get a, that, that, that much of a percentage of it because you know horror better than a lot of people I know. Yeah, but I feel like a lot of the things I know about horror is osmosis. Oh, okay, not or, like you've seen everything. Or, or you know, misspent youth, where, like, it's not something that, like, I'm actively into. I just, they were there when I was 16. Um, so I watched a bunch of horror movies. Um, but uh, they, they have some fun uh, celebrity cameos, uh, like Tony Todd is in the episode. He, he has uh, to be, yeah, of course. Yeah, well, and also, Tony, Tony Todd will do ever, anything, like... <laughs> Well, the entire joke... Or maybe he won't do anything, but he shows movie. up all over the... Oh, really? Okay, yeah. Yeah, is that he... Because uh, they, they, their career, they or their, they want their career to be horror filmmaking. They actually make terrible commercials, like the ones that you see on TV that interrupt other commercials. Like, they, they make terrible local commercials for people. Um, and they have Tony Todd on for something, and then he just kind of comes home with them and then doesn't leave. 
that's awesome. I have to watch it. In their like, even if that's not my kind of comedy, I'm going to watch just that episode because Well, that I episode's love, on Hulu. That's a season one episode, so... Because I love Tony Todd, and he cracks me up, and he's great. Uh, Kane Hodder's on it, who's, like, the most famous Jason. He played Jason the most. Um, and he's on it, and he's super depressed because ten years later, he realized he was recast as Jason in Freddy vs. Jason. Yeah. And, and and he plays like he does a whole like that's the, that's his whole character in that episode is that he's trying to kill himself because he just <laughs> realized he was recast in Freddy vs Jason. Um, so yeah, uh, <laughs> Seth Green shows up because Seth Green shows up in everything, in everything. that's geeky yep. at some point. And I mean, he's um, got horror ties too. So well, and the two guys. This is actually a show that is. Inspired by real events, the two guys are actual horror filmmakers now, and it's inspired by their life, their so lives, or you, you know when they were struggling and coming up in the business. Yeah, I was going to say it has kind of a meta thing, but that's not quite a meta thing. That's just drawing from personal experience, I suppose. But yeah. Oh, and and they break the fourth wall in ways I've never seen in oh, a well, show, really. So then it is a meta thing. Oh, oh, okay. Oh no, no, yeah. They they have normal fourth wall jokes as normal as fourth wall jokes can can be, mm -hmm. like. There's a joke with Kane Hodder before they go to the to the to the horror convention where they're like, "Here's all the people that are always there," and then they turn to the camera and they go, "And Kane Hodder." Then later they meet Kane Hodder and he punches one of them out and goes, "That's that joke earlier in the episode." That's hilarious. Um, but they also become themselves playing the characters on set. Uh, there's a joke where Seth Green starts talking about how terrible the main guys movie is um he like 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 his real movie the movie he, he made the 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 main guy he his big i guess claim to fame is some horror movie called hatchet i've never seen it but seth green starts talking about how terrible hatchet is and then the main guy is like hey that's funny improv seth can you stick to the script and then they just continue out the scene does that ever feel kind of self-indulgent like how do you work that into your internal logic it doesn't feel self-indulgent because it's almost always self-deprecating but that, but how does uh, that but how does how does how does that stop it from being self-indulgent like how does that cancel that out like no. oh okay all right because like, cause like it's, I said, never, it's never annoying like like maybe maybe it would be if like, you it, didn't like it but does I don't it know. make sense I always, I always go with do, it do they do it in such a way where it makes sense no oh. they just break character and act like they are the people making the show Okay, because in my world, that's almost the definition of self-indulgence. Um, so and like, they also have a terrible laugh track. Um, I was going to ask you if there was a laugh track. It is an intention, I think, intentionally bad laugh track. And it's not a studio like, audience. Yeah, no, it's not a studio audience. Um, <laughs> but I don't think it's because, like... I think it's supposed to be like a running gag on the idea of laugh tracks. Yeah. Where they will, where like they will tell like a really dark joke, and they do that laugh track thing where like there's the one guy in the back that's just laughing <laughs> so hard. <laughs> well, uh, Eric, I'm gonna recommend something now. I'm sorry, I must have gone on too long. No, that's all right. Do you mind if I recommend something now? <laughs> Sure. Oh, thank you. Today, um, I'm going to recommend a video game system, Eric. Uh, this is something that I got a few weeks ago that I've been using in some of my videos, and I've been meaning to recommend this for a while. This is the Retron 5. The Retron 5. Do you know about these, Eric? No idea. Well, I will tell you about it. Uh, so it looks like it plays like a bunch of different console games. It does, yeah. So uh, there, there, there have been for the last few years um, these things called uh, the retro systems. You had the uh, the retro the, the retro duo, and then there are some other ones. I don't know what they're all called, but it started with uh, systems that played NES and Super Nintendo games, and then they had one that did both of those, and then they had one with three that was NES, Super Nintendo, and Genesis. And basically what happened, I think, is that this company, uh, this Retron company, what are they called? This is uh, Hyperkin. Um, they slowly, over time, I think, started to acquire the rights to uh, various hardware. 
and they're like right now they're trying to get the hardware for Nintendo 64. They haven't got their hands on it yet. They're not allowed to use that yet. So um, they're they're trying to get. I don't know if it's a matter of like getting a like 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 getting the rights to the patent or if it's a matter of getting Nintendo to release the specs or what exactly it is. But there are certain systems that they can't do yet. Uh, but they have um, managed to get quite a few. And the Retron 5 is a really interesting eclectic assortment of slots. Uh, you have the uh, Genesis, the Super Nintendo, and the NES. So you have those three that I mentioned. But you also have the Famicom, the Super Famicom. Uh, so you can play Japanese Super Nintendo games. And uh, there are certain games that I... Do you have any Japanese Super Nintendo I don't personally, but there are a few Famicom games that are cheaper to get that cart than they are the Super Nintendo cart, and they're exactly the same game, but some of the language is, is, is Japanese instead of uh, instead of English. And like like uh, I think Turtles in Time is that way. I think that game is almost like, if you go on eBay, it's like half the cost of getting... Well, that game's game. all story. You don't, want, you don't want to lose a second of the story of that game. And that's why... Eric, I don't care if it has English <laughs> or Japanese language in it. Uh, and then it also, and this is one of the reasons I wanted to get it too, uh, it also has a slot on the bottom, and I do have, have a few of these, uh, a slot on the, on the bottom for Game Boy Advance, and it, and it plays the handheld from GBA going all the way back, so Game Boy Color and, and Game Boy. Uh, so you can play... Oh, that's really cool. So you can play original Game Boy games on this thing on a larger screen, um, and the way it works is uh, these things play from the ROM directly. So when you uh, put the game in, it downloads the ROM into the system, and then you play from the ROM. Now, for whatever reason, you can't take the cartridge out when it does that. So, like, it still requires the cartridge to be in, and I don't think that... Um, so I don't think you have to really worry about internal memory. It doesn't, like... And I think maybe that's the reason. I'm not sure. And I, I'm not a tech guy. I'm not going to pretend like I know what I'm talking about. Um, I just know what I've observed playing it. Uh, but when you... Um, but the big benefit to that is you put a cartridge in, and it... And, and it, downloads that you're playing it directly from the ROM and A, it looks as crisp and, 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 and vibrant as it ever has. Now, there are certain games that I, I've always had somewhat, that, that I have cartridges that, are, that have always been somewhat faulty and I put them in this and as long as you can get the thing to finally download, it's not faulty and it looks perfect and this, and B, the other really nice thing about it is uh, it's not going to break down on you. I have a couple games on NES that sort of work, but you're only ever ever able to play them for about 10 or 15 minutes. So I have uh, I, I have the side-scrolling um, crash test dummy game. That's a, that's a game I happen to have for whatever reason. <laughs> um, it's never worked right. Like Ever since I bought it, it's never quite worked right. And uh, that was just a thing that I remembered renting once when I was a kid and I was curious about it and I found it some cheap at a store once, so I bought it, and I've never been able to get past, like, the middle of the first level on it, because it always freezes up. I put it in this, and it looks perfect, but it took me about three or four times putting it in to get the the ROM to download, because the, the cartridge is a little bit faulty, but once I got you it... you get to do the... Before you put it in? Well, I mean, I always have to do that on that system. That doesn't, that's not really all that necessary with this, which is kind of nice. Um, like, like you put it in, and if it doesn't, if it doesn't read it right away, you just pull it out and put it back in again. Uh, but what's really funny about it is I never played more than the, the first half of that level, and wouldn't you know it, I couldn't get past the same place where I was <laughs> just because it was too hard and I wasn't very good at it. So, but now I can work on it. Anyway, um, that's it. That's that's one of those few LJN games that I think is kind of okay. Uh, but but anyway, um, the big reason I bought it, Eric, is because um, I wanted something that would make it easier to record uh, cartridge games because oh. I'm doing more gameplay stuff, and I have a really good. Um, I, I, a, a really good um, uh, card for that um, to to uh, record gameplay, but uh, the problem is most of my systems, most of these systems, and of course I have nearly every system. I, I don't have a Super Famicom, but I have everything else. Um, I don't think I have any more advanced either, but I have a system that plays it because DS plays that. Anyway, um, yeah. but uh, but the the uh, but the problem is those I have all on RF switches, and I don't have any way to get that into my capture device. Um, but 
it, uh, but I can I can get everything else into it because I have an adapter for composite and I can get an adapter for component that that works directly with that 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 uh, converts to HDMI and the whole thing with my capture device I, I've I've uh, I, I've recommended that before works with uh, with HDMI. This is entirely an HDMI system and it's and it plays the games in HD. So um, I can. Uh, hook this thing up to my capture device and record anything off of it, and that's how I made that cool spot video a couple weeks ago. Um, so uh, that's the big reason I bought it. It's a hundred and seventy dollar system, which is yeah, that cool spot video was pretty cool. Oh, thanks, man. Um, are, are, are you making fun of me because you just said cool, or did you actually think it was cool? Um, no, I did that both. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but uh, it's you know if you already have some of these systems, it's a uh, weird it, like like it's kind of expensive. Um, like I said, I bought it uh, mostly for the sake of capturing oh, gameplay. Right. Like I said, it's it's 170. Oh, that's not that's not terrible, especially if you're the kind of person that collects those kinds of games. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Or if uh, you're the kind of person that is finally getting into cartridge collecting and you want something to play them on like I like I guess you might get to a place where you are getting enough of the different slots uh, things for the slots that you would that you would need a thing like this but like I said for me it was I wanted to get one for a long time and it was hard at first to justify it because I have most of these systems already but like I said the the, the thing that really pushed me over the edge was I, I really want to be able to record off of it um it, as far as downsides, I'll mention a couple. I mean, obviously, this is not a review show, but I will mention a couple just in case you're on the fence about wanting to get one of these. Um, the first thing is the controller is nonsense. Um, obviously, oh. obviously, it's not a big deal because it's got ports on the sides for every kind of controller that it that that, that, that these systems play. So it's got a well, it's got three. It's got Genesis, NES, and Super Nintendo. And what's cool is uh, you can use any of those alternately with any of the games. So you can play Super Nintendo con games with a Genesis controller now. Oh, that's uh, really cool. Yeah, and it, what's really fun is if you, for instance, let's say you put in, like, Mortal Kombat on Genesis and you put in an NES controller. It will tell you your controller doesn't have enough buttons to play this game, <laughs> but it will allow you to try it anyway so you can play it <laughs> wrong. Like, it doesn't stop you. It's not like you can't, it just lets you know this is a dumb idea. <laughs> and then you play it anyway. Uh, if if you're you know if you want to do that dumb idea, but anyway, um, but the controller is really dumb. Um, you have to turn it on sometimes and use it because uh, sometimes you need it in order to navigate the menus. Um, or at least it makes it mm. slightly easier, I guess, because you can do that with any of the controllers. But sometimes like like it's hard to tell exactly what button is supposed to do what with the configuration as far as navigating the menus goes. But what's weird about it is you would think for a thing like this that's all about c old cartridge games, classic, you know, old school games, that it would have a D-pad and not a stick. Why would you put a stick on it? It makes z zilch for sense to me. That looks that looks like a like one of those uh those like knockoff games yeah. where like you just plug the controller into the TV and play and play games that are like in the controller. Oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah, or even like like knockoff cartridge things where it's not in the in the system. Like like yeah, oh yeah, it looks like like the worst of the ripoff controllers. I mean like it's too small. It doesn't fit well in your hand. Uh, it 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 feels really clunky. Uh, you'd you'd rather be playing with a soap dish. Uh, it's like it feels like you're playing with a soap dish now that I'm now that I'm saying that. Um, I get more responsive controls out of the kitchen sink. <laughs> yeah, and then what's weird about it is that the stick clicks. You hear that? Yeah. Like when you're playing, so if you play with it, which is pointless, just get a Super Nintendo controller. But when you're playing, um, it you will you could play Super Mario World, and it sounds like you're playing Street Fighter because whenever you move the stick, you need to it do does a that. video. You need to do a video where you're playing a game that's really hard, and you do it with that controller. Yeah, I mean, like, it works. Like a Sonic game? Yeah, yeah, okay, I mean, it works, but it's dumb, and it feels like a soap dish. The other thing is, uh, certain games, there will be a slight lag, depending on what kind of TV you're playing it on. And, uh, there's this, it, as far as I can tell, this is the issue. Um, certain, uh, TVs will process games from this period, and it's, I, I, Super Nintendo has the worst time uh, uh, for whatever reason, at least certain games do. Um, Jason and I, the other 
night recorded Super Mario World, and we had to actually switch TVs because there was so much of a lag. It was so much of a noticeable lag that I couldn't get past the third level. And like I've been playing Mario World since I was seven, so um, so that was really problematic. Um, Does yeah. it play Super Famicom? Yeah, actually, it's weird because it says Famicom, but it's actually Super Famicom that it plays. I'm not sure that that slot isn't both because I don't have any, okay. so I'm not sure. But yeah, uh, but yeah, it, Would it's. That uh, possibly fix it? Like you said, the specifically the Super Nintendo slot is the one that seems to have the most trouble. If you got Super Mario World for the Super Famicom, I don't would that know. Possibly fix it. I kind okay. of, I kind of doubt it because the software is would be kind of the same. Um, okay. So I don't think it's the slot. I think it's the games. Uh, but, oh, okay. but I don't know. Um, but it, so here's the thing. What what they suggest because um, Hyperkin is is is, uh, is keenly aware that this has been a problem because uh, they get complaints about it. So what they tell you is most of your digital TVs, your flat screens, have a game mode and. When you put it in the game mode, it's supposed to uh, it, it's supposed to fix that. It's supposed to account for it. Um, but I have a TV that is an old that's an old digital TV that doesn't have that, and it didn't it didn't quite work on it. But then my newer TV, it seemed mostly fine. There was a slight lag, but it wasn't anything like it was, and I was able to play on it just pretty much just fine. Um, but uh, it it works pretty much fine on CTR TV or CRT TVs. Um, you know the the older TVs that they were kind of that were around when we were playing these what things, is but. the what is the cord that has does that have the the red yellow no uh, as white, i said as i said it, as i said it's an hdmi system oh, okay. uh, which is the reason i bought it because i uh, my my uh, my game card is is uh, is hdmi and so i'm able to, to to plug it directly into it um my recording device so yeah um does it have any other yeah i mean obviously you could probably get a converter thing but um it's you know it's hdmi um, and it's also got an SD card slot, and, um, you can use that to, um, do, like, cheat codes with Game Genie and stuff. Like, there, there's, there's, there's places where you can download that stuff and put it on. And, um, there are, I think, ways with SD cards also to load, uh, ROMs and hacks and, and put those in here, too. Um, so anyway, uh, there's a oh, lot wow. of cool stuff it does if you're... In the if you're if you're into classic gaming at all, um, you know you know retro stuff. But yeah, um, so well, far I, 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 I imagine with, it. with at 170, that's probably cheaper than actually buying the individual consoles. Yes, absolutely it is. Sure, and that was the, that was the whole point of the old ones. Like you know the retro duo, I think is like. 30 40 bucks I mean it's real it's, it's it's real cheap oh wow um because if you get you know most of the places that I see at least around here like vintage stock and uh in places like that um uh, you know pawn shops and stuff um like NES's will run you 50 60 bucks Genesis will run you 50 60 bucks so, yeah I mean they add up certainly yeah we, we actually have a specialty store here in town called level up that's all retro games mm -hmm. and game systems um, and yeah, I think that's about the price, 50, 60 bucks for most any system. I've been looking into getting, or I've been looking into prices of uh, of of uh, older discontinued systems that I don't have because I'm starting uh, a, a collection like I do with movies of, this is going to be the longest recommends we've ever done, um, of... Uh, I, I recommend this. Recommends. Yeah, it's it's a really good one. It's a really I recommend it. Um, but but I uh, but I, I'm I'm starting a I've probably talked about this before. Um, a collection of superhero video games like I'm doing with my uh, DVD library. So I'm trying to buy every you superhero play. game. With, yeah, yeah. Well, and I want to make more of those. Um, but yeah, like so so superhero uh video games and like all of them, which is gonna be insane, and that's like the worst idea ever. Um, and some of that will be stupid expensive. Well, I'd love but, to see some of those. Uh. Like Maximum Carnage and uh, yeah. was it War of the Infinity Gems? Maximum Carnage, I actually did one of those with Dan. I think I saw that. What's the other one? Uh, the Tick? No, no, no. There's another. Like, there's Maximum Carnage and then there's another. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought, I thought you meant of stuff I'd reviewed. Um, yeah, there's. The other one was. Um, is it Lethal Protector? No, that's Venom. No, it's. I know I'm going to think of it as soon as we turn the, the, the camera off. Alliance? No! Um. Gosh darn it! I know it, but it's been so long, and, and it was it was vastly inferior. Like it wasn't great. Yeah. yeah. Um. Uh. It was a symbiote thing, and it was a bunch of symbiotes that are obscure now and nobody uses. Um, and I'm pretty sure you and Dan have reviewed the story arc because I think it's named after a Venom story arc. I don't. I don't. Yeah. No, it is, but I don't know if we actually did that arc. 
Um, I'm gonna think of it when this is done, and it's gonna, and, and, and I'm gonna be so annoyed at myself. And, and, and I'm sure three people have written it in the comments already. Um, but yeah, but yeah, you had hold on, yeah, Maximum Carnage, and then you had, yeah, I can't think Triple of it. Cemetery? No, see. I, anyway, I can't think of it. Um, <laughs> that's gonna be it for us today. This is what I recommend, and uh, Eric Brand uh, recommended. This is what I recommend. Austin. TV show. Everybody, thanks as always for watching. We sure appreciate it. I can't think of it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I am Captain Logan. I'm Eric, and we'll see you again next time. <laughs>